Welcome to Conversations, Berkeley Hall's program devoted to people making a difference in our world. I'm your host, Lisa Taylor. Our guest today is an artist in the truest sense of the word. He sees what's true and expresses what he sees as a singer-songwriter and as a painter. He's produced five spiritual music CDs and in the last several years has focused his artistic expression on painting murals, what he calls You Are Loved murals. Most recently, he was named a difference maker by the Pulitzer Prize winning international newspaper, The Christian Science Monitor, and was invited here to Berkeley Hall School from his hometown in Boston as part of our Difference Maker series, which is all about empowering our students to make a positive difference in the world. Alex Cook, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Let's start at the beginning. When did you first start calling yourself an artist? I probably started thinking in those terms in high school and then certainly in college. I began to have a sense that an artist is a thing to be and that my inner compass was telling me that's what my life was about. Do you know what was it in, about your inner compass that was saying being an artist was it? What, what was it that was pushing you in that direction? I think it was feeling, feeling a lot of meaning when I was making art. Um, you know, uh, exploring images, interacting with images and ideas, it all felt very powerful. Um, from, from that time, high school, college, I really felt a strong attraction to uh, exploring ideas and art was a really natural way to do that. So it was that, that connection with ideas, I think. Is there, um, is there a common thread inside in expressing art in different mediums? Does it, does it feel the same inside, whether you're expressing art in music or in paint? Uh, that's something that I've thought a lot about over the years, and um, I have learned over the years. Um, I remember in college, I, I felt like my musical world and my visual art world were two completely different worlds. The way that it happened was, um, I would, when I wrote songs, it would be about things I was feeling. Uh -huh. And when I would make a painting, it would be about something I was imagining. And they were very different. One was about emotions, and the other was about storytelling and imagination. Um, uh, and, and over many years, um, I, as I, I thought about it and sort of got deeper into both of them, I did realize that, in fact, they're coming from the same place. And now they're basically really interchangeable. I, I, uh, the ideas for paintings and, and songs are, are not different in my experience. But at one point, they were very, very different. Is there a specific process you go through from getting the idea and then translating that into expression? Uh, it's. There certainly is. Uh, I don't really have like a step-by-step -step process. It more is just a feeling. Um, I certainly, you know, if I sit down to write a song, um, I begin with a with a feeling that I have, or or uh, or a, a concept that I want to explore, and then uh, so much of my work is just sort of pondering and listening inside myself. Uh, and letting letting ideas come up, uh, letting turns of phrase arise, letting a story that's going to make my point uh, come into my into my thoughts. Did, does it take courage to express the truth of what <laughs> you're feeling? Uh, it can. Sometimes it's very scary, um, and I think you know there there's when it's scary that is pushing back against the inner impulsion to follow that meaning uh, that I was talking about earlier. Um, that, that push to do something meaningful is very powerful. Uh, and then, you know, for any number of reasons, it can feel scary to do that. And then you have the tension between the voices of, am I going to Am I going to not do this because it's scary, or am I going to push through? What, what the do you fear? think makes? What, what do you think? Where do you think the fear comes from? Where, what is that coming from? Uh, I think sometimes, maybe it's because the content of the idea that you want to express, uh, you worry that you'll be seen as foolish, or you'll be showing too much, um, something you can't take back. Uh, 
does it have anything to do with with people identifying you a certain way and not wanting to be locked into that? Mm. You're, when you say expressing too much, you're sort of exposing more of yourself than you thought you wanted to? I think it, it, it can be that. Uh, I think, you know, the things that come, the things that want to be expressed, they just are what they are, and sometimes they're very, uh, they're not, they're not meant for the, for the world. Right. <laughs> um, they're just, they're just, you know, what they are. Um, and sometimes they're too innocent, or they're too uh, strange. Um, and so the scary piece, I think, is, you know, when I, when I feel that, I, I know that's actually what I am. I know that's what I actually want to say. That's the true thing. Um, but then you think, well, what will people think when, yeah. when, I, when I show that this is what I actually feel and believe? Um, and I do think that, you know, you have to pick and choose, but, but more often than not, I feel like my inclination as an artist is to say, well, if I think it's true, if I really, really feel it's true, I don't actually want to have to hide myself from, from the world that I live in. Uh, and another piece of it is, if I'm feeling fear about expressing myself, it feels probably pretty true that lots of other people are feeling fear about that as well. And I know that I've been helped so many times by somebody who was willing to go ahead and do it. And I really uh, relish the opportunity to hopefully, you know, be that for somebody else. And that's what art does, I think. I mean, mm -hmm. when when you started transitioning from music to art, I don't know if this if I have the timeline right. You painted your car. Yeah, the the timeline is is not exactly that. I I, I have always done done visual art since you know way back, um, and I I've always did music as well. It's just that I did music professionally for four years or five years in there. Um, so you know the the visual art has been has been through it all. Um, and the car painting took place about 10 years ago, uh, 10 or 11 years ago now. Um, yeah, and that was a surprising thing that, that came about. You, you mentioned, I mean, you, you painted a, a bird, mm -hmm. right, with lots of feathers, <laughs> and uh, we saw a beautiful picture of that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that driving that car around took commitment. You had to commit mm -hmm. before driving it. What were you committing to? It was committing to being, not being anonymous anymore. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, so it was you taking a stand and saying, "This is who I am in the world." Yeah. So, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Hmm. Uh, my my goal is to make things that that will. Uh, that make me feel wonder and joy, and I I go on on the faith that if if I feel something deeply as I'm making it, then uh, hopefully other people will feel the feeling that I'm having um, or something related to it. Um, I I love wonder. Um, I think wonder is a very natural place to be. Uh, I feel like that's a, about stripping away kind of um, assumptions or, or maybe bored categorizations that we do in our minds and wonder brings us back to a place of just we're just seeing something for what it is without without the trappings that, that culture can put on something. Um, I, I think it's my, my language for in my art tends to not be super intellectual. Uh, I think it's pretty simple. It's mostly just about feeling, and I think my natural language as an artist is, is it ends up being what I think is a pretty uh, mainstream language in a way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, r I really like the, the idea that people will be able to feel my works. 
well, you've without said, trying too hard. You've said that your focus has always been about celebrating good qualities. Mm -hmm that that's where the riches of life are and it sounds like that's what you're saying that the what's common to all of us is what you're trying to bring out so what would you say i know, I know the first mural that you did mm -hmm. there were five sort of affirmations that you put in that mural right? the first you are loved mural the first you are loved mural yeah so what were those those five affirmations are you are loved you are needed you are important you are beautiful and you can do it Powerful, <laughs> very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now that we're talking about murals, you shifted from music to art, and specifically to murals. Why big art? Why murals? Well, I had been painting murals for 15 years before. Oh, okay. Before that, um, I mean that's been my my uh, career basically for for my whole life. Um, so uh, I had, you know, 15 years earlier made, a, made the jump from, from small works to, to large works. And the reason for large works, uh, honestly, was uh, way back then in, in college, I felt very concerned about, you know, how do you get your, your images, these things that, you know, I just love so much, how do you get them in front of people's eyes? How do you actually make art work? Um, what do you want art to do? Well, when I, you say make make art work, what is it? I, what it, what is yeah. its work? <laughs> you know. I think any any artist wants wants their art to to be a conversation. Wants their art to to reach somebody. And the the work then is to have somebody feel what you felt. To have someone see the value that you felt. I mean, art basically, I think, is you're saying I've found value here. Can you see it too? What do you want people to be focused on? What do I want people to be focused on? Um, you mean when I, when I show them a piece of art that I've made? Well, your art has, those five affirmations are all very positive. Mm -hmm. So is that the hope that you're trying to reach that part of people? That the, I mean, you are loved. Yeah. Is a pretty straightforward yeah. Affirmation saying you are loved. I mean, that's yeah. where did that come from? That right. that was your focus. Uh, well, I think you know my hope with with you are loved has been it began with a desire to be supportive. Um, the first you are loved mural that you mentioned it was in an elementary school and I and the principal were talking about how do you make a mural that will help these children feel safe. Um, and so that's, that's how the first You Are Loved affirmation arrived. And then as it developed into a, a project where there were murals that were being, you know, where the, the words You Are Loved were, were being made much larger, um, I began to think, well, so what happens when you put those words in front of the great wide world uh, and not just children in elementary school? Um, and then I began to see, okay, well, a, a, a bold, confident, um, unequivocal statement that you are loved put out into mass culture is going to have lots of different reactions. Um, and at that point, I think the, the point of you are loved is to, is to start conversations to start conversations between people, but also especially um, of people within themselves. Uh, How do you mean? I mean, it seems very, seems clear to me that, that a You Are Loved mural that's out in, in the world, one person might see it and say, oh, that is so sweet, I'm, I just feel that. And the next person standing next to them might say, that's not true, I don't believe that. That's kitschy, it's false, who are they trying to fool? Um, and so there's two really opposite reactions that I'm sure happen. Um, but through the handling of the art, um, I've re I'm really trying to make these murals in a way that, that hopefully will make it difficult to see them as uh, glib mm -hmm. and uh, a, a, an easy thing to say. Well, because you, you, what what I mean is what I what I mean by this is I mean it's the it's the most intimate uh, deep 
thing I think that any of us can feel and it's the saving fact I mean it's the thing that when somebody's feeling miserable if they can feel that a little bit like the misery goes away or when someone's feeling terrified that that feeling of of being loved whether you're thinking of you're being you're you're loved by someone in your family or you know you're you're loved by by God or you're loved by your spouse uh, that I think is the lifeline for everybody um, so I take it very very seriously that this I believe it's true um, that everyone that is loved. everyone is is loved and I think we forget it uh, or we get distracted from that uh, and I really want to bring people's thoughts back to that in a way that is that is meaningful uh, and these murals are very different than if you say put up a poster in in uh, you know Times New Roman font in black and white and it said you are loved you yeah know? that would be nice but that would be these murals have have the whole art aspect which is using the power of color and the power of design they're very colorful and very full yeah. of design and mm -hmm. fluid movement and right. really beautiful pieces of art aside yeah. from the beautiful message if someone is well let me ask you this. There was, a, there was a car that was driving around that had a message on it. Mm -hmm. And it w said, it had a three different messages? Yeah. On, the, on the driver's side, it said, you are beautiful. On the passenger side, it said, you are needed. And on the hood, it said, you are loved. And uh, so that, I made that, that car, or I painted that car a couple of years ago. And then it went off into the world. And it drove from Boston to San Francisco. And now Traded it, owners. Yeah. And, yeah. and now it, it drives around on the West Coast. I don't know where it is. Um, but I got an email over, uh, over Christmas from a person that I hadn't met before uh, saying that um, the email basically said, uh, you don't know me, but um, I've been in a, a very dark place and and haven't uh, been feeling good about myself and and was uh, on the verge of, of ending my life. And he said he said I prayed a, I prayed a quick prayer to ask God for some guidance, and then you know went on a walk or something. And he said that he saw this car, and he felt that God was speaking directly to him. And that that message, that experience of seeing the car and feeling this spiritual impulse, I guess, um, made him commit to not ending his life that day. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a really specific <laughs> example of, of success. Um, that's about as successful as you can get as an yeah. artist. You <laughs> saved somebody's life. Yeah. That's... Um, that's very powerful. And the intention that you're putting into your art of telling people at, at their core that they're loved, mm -hmm. you reached someone mm -hmm. at their core. Yep. You saved their life. How does that feel? I remember reading that email. I was holding my iPad, reading that email, uh, sitting there at Christmas time, and it was just, just a, a, I felt like I was gonna cry, you know? Uh, I felt so, so grateful that he, that he had felt better. Uh, I felt grateful that he reached out to tell me, and I felt grateful for this, you know, the mountain of, of work and thought that is behind all of this uh, that, that had led that to happen. And then I felt grateful for all of the people. I do think it has to be true that there are people who are having experiences, maybe not that big, but, but who are having them and not telling me. Oh, I'm sure. Because, uh, you know, how, how would they? Or uh, maybe they didn't think of it or, you know, whatever. They're just going through their lives. But, but I think that's a, that's a faith that I have tried to cultivate over the years. As a muralist, you make a piece of art and you leave. And you're not there. Whereas, you know, when you write a song, you play it for somebody and they tell you how they felt. Yeah. But um, making a mural, you're just not there and the conversations don't happen. Do you have a, a daily practice that you go through to keep your thought always looking for the good? Because it seems like you're just constantly looking for what's good and what's beautiful, yeah. and then expressing that in your art. Is there is there a, a practice that you have to do that? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, it goes back many years for sure, and I think it's something that the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Uh, I, I pray every day. Um, I focus my thought on, on my best understanding of God, and I try to listen to what God has to tell me to do. I, I have some very specific prayers, like I, I love to just ask God in a, in a daily way, uh, what can I do today to, to serve? What can I do to, to help somebody else? Um, whether that's in my, you know, my artwork or if it's in taking a friend out to lunch or whatever, it can, I mean anything. Um, and and it, it all, I really think it's about that, that listening. Um, and it is a discipline, but it's also, you know, over the years, when you, when you receive new ideas from listening, it becomes a very compelling argument for more listening. Um, now, is that how you would describe the ideas that you get for your art? Is that you're really just listening and translating that into an expression, an artistic expression? It's certainly that. Uh, I wouldn't have always said it. It, it wasn't always that, but it is now. Um, it's listening, but it's also exploring. Um, and then listening in a way while I'm making the work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, say, say I'm, I start a painting, my, my, my painting style, my art making style is generally pretty improvisational. I very often begin with a blank piece of paper uh, and just... Well, don't you always start with a blank piece of paper? Well, <laughs> I, what, I, what I mean is, what I mean is, uh, I don't begin with an idea. Oh, I, I see what and, I, and I make a mark. Uh, and I just, it just unfolds. Wow. Um, so you're really listening in the process of yeah. creating, yeah. which is different from saying, hmm, I'm getting an idea, now let me right. configure it and then go put it there out there. There are some artists who have an idea and they make sketches and they make it perfect and then they make the painting. Right. And that's basically the exact opposite of how I work. Do you also improvise in your music? Is that, are you an improvisational musician? Um, in, a, in a way, I'm, I'm not, I'm not technically skilled enough on musical instruments to, to do, you know, like a jazz improvisation, for example. But uh, my, my way of making, of writing a song um, is, is really listening. Uh, I'm sitting there with my guitar in my lap and I'm just feeling things out. Um, and I am listening for a melody and, you know, it will come in, in a four note chunk and then like another three note chunk uh, and and that's all fitting in with the words and what's the story that I'm trying to tell, um, and choosing which which turn of phrase or or uh, which uh, which usage of words I guess will really unveil the the point that I'm trying to make and make someone go oh like that's what he meant yeah um, that's the real experience and 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 not say oh you know love great you know it's the thing everybody everybody writes love songs, but and it's easy to hear love songs in a kind of you just throw them off because 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 love you know that's an easy word to say. But then how do you make a song that actually shows what what love is and the extent to which love compels someone to serve or the extent to which it makes someone be be patient until they're really pushing against their limits. Um, a, th a thousand different things that, that show the, the, real, the real experience of, of virtue or striving to be good or, or you know, all the, the real, real experiences and not the fake descriptions. Is the, do you feel the reward of that in the process of creating? Mm hmm What does that look like or feel, what does that feel like? It's wonderful. It's... I mean, to me, it's the, one of the most wonderful feelings, uh, just being engaged in bringing something new into the world. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very much like I don't have children, but I hear pe my friends speak about their children and the delight that they feel of seeing them do something that they, you know, they just learned, they're learning to read or whatever. You know, they're, they're, that's, that's honestly how I feel with my, with my songs or my pictures. Sometimes I'll make a, I'll make a song and I just can't stop listening to it because it didn't exist yesterday, <laughs> yeah. you know, and here's this new thing. 
and it's and it's it's got a melody that there's no other melody like that, and it's got this this story, and here it is, and it wasn't here. You know, How do you think we should inspire children to pursue that discovery process? Well, I guess I, f I feel strongly that there's, that there's two big parts, and the first part that you just can't do without is you have to actually enjoy it. You have to, uh, you have to you have to love it. You have to, you have to be doing something that you love. And, and um, that certainly is the thing that makes somebody continue doing something mm -hmm. over years. Um, and then the other piece, I think, is the, the supplement to that love is discipline. Um, I think sometimes when, when we're teaching children, we push hard on the discipline and we forget about the love piece. Um, but they're both 100% necessary, I think, uh, to actually get somewhere substantial. So for, for children to, to pursue something, to find the love and the discipline is really important in the process of that. You were brought to Berkeley Hall as part of our Difference Maker series and the goal really is to help students think more deeply about making a positive change in the world. How do you see students as using art as a means to doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, a big part of, of my increased understanding of that was allowing myself to admit that there was value in what I had to give. Uh, that was some of, sometimes the hardest thing was, you know, okay, so I wrote this song. Well, I was just sitting in my bedroom writing a song. How can that actually you know, make a difference to anybody. And the thing is, if you don't show it to anybody, then it won't. Uh, and you won't show it to anybody unless you think it has value and unless you believe that it has, you actually feel that it has value. Um, How did you get to the point where you felt that about your work? Was there a certain point where you decided? It, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a process. There yeah. certainly have been uh, moments where it opened up a lot more. Um, Definitely when I began making music, just before I began making music professionally, I had a big breakthrough where uh, prior to that, I, I mean, I had been writing music for, for you know, 15 years before that, um, 20 years, um, but I had always really not connected with the performance piece of it. I, mm -hmm. I had just couldn't do it. I was bad at it. I didn't, didn't enjoy it. Um, but I wanted very much to make music and to share it with people, and so I really felt stuck for a long time. I mean, for 10 years I felt stuck. Um, but I just continued making music because that was the fun part. Uh, stuck out of fear? Stuck out of... It just didn't go well when I would get in front of people. Yeah. I, 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 I felt nervous. Um, I always kind of felt miserable afterwards. I wondered if anybody liked it or if anybody cared. So um, what shifted? What shifted was, and this was 100% just the, the result of prayer, was I, I realized that it wasn't about if they liked my music. <laughs> it was about making music that would help somebody else. And when, the, when that happened, honestly, I started writing these songs, and I was like, I know that these songs are going to help people. I just knew it. Uh, and it wasn't a question to me anymore, so I said, I felt uh, I have to get on stage and, and do it. And, and from that point on, I love performing. So it was more about getting the message out there because you knew it was important, yeah, not I, about I, what they were seeing of yeah. you. So it was turning the focus outward yep. instead of inward. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, with, with art, there, there's really this... Uh, something really amazing happens with art because an artist has to has to love their their own self and process in order to serve which is very different than say serving i don't know it's different than serving as a nurse where everybody knows that it's service that that a nurse is caring for somebody else whereas art has this perception of artists are egotists yeah self absorbed so exactly yeah. and and it can be true it can be true that you know that the artists don't have 
haven't internalized the the truth that uh, that your art becomes powerful when it serves. Um, That's I'm going to pause. Art, your art becomes powerful when it serves, mm -hmm. when it serves others. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful statement. I think it's true, but it also causes us to have to question what we mean by serve. Did Van Gogh serve? He did, but not not like a volunteer fireman. <laughs> you know, in a different way. He made beautiful things. He didn't even, he didn't ever meet the millions of people that he, whose life he has made better. He wasn't thinking about them. He was thinking about beauty. He was thinking about the perfect, you know, the innocence of creation is what he was thinking about. He was making landscapes, you know. And so he makes these landscapes and they're just out in the world because of the purity of his idea. People get it. Right. And that's service. It's actually service, but it's not what we mean when we say service, I think. Yeah. It's not like, you know. Well, it's serving, it's serving by connecting people to who they are. Yeah. If, you, if, if I can do something that connects you to who you are, and you get a glimpse of your truth, right. you've had a, a little bit of healing, a little bit of mm -hmm. opening up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there, was, there was an experience uh, you shared in another program where you were about to put the paintbrush on the car for the first time yeah. and you actually couldn't paint because mm -hmm. you were so scared. Yeah. And that transition is, is just what you're talking about, going from sort of an inward focus to an outward focus. Can you describe that a little bit? Yeah. In fact, as we've been talking over the last few days, I'm realizing that that, that thing has happened to me several times in my life. The first mural I ever painted, okay. that first car with music, it's always been, it's always been like that. The thing that was keeping me from, from making whatever the work was that I was, that I was trying to make was a very powerful fear of, I'm going to be seen in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, and each time the freedom has come when, when there's been a, a shift in my thoughts away from what are they going to think about me to how can, to seeing it as an opportunity to have an effect in, in the world. Because, you know, that, that feeling of, of knowing that you can make somebody else's life better is powerful and it's really compelling. Uh, it's a very joyful feeling, and you know, it's when when you know that that there's something out there that can really make you feel good, <laughs> you try to do it. And you have very tangible evidence that you've done that yeah. by saving someone's life that you know of, and probably many, many more beyond mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and you know, that's that's like a very extreme example, but but I, there are certainly a lot of people who have told me, "Gosh, you know, that was so beautiful," or or this song, you know, really really touched me and I you know they, they had tears in their eyes during the concert and and all of those things are, are really bolstering to to an artist who you know you hope with all of your being that that what you do will will be effective so it doesn't there are lots of different kinds of ways to, to touch somebody and so it's a, it's really that from a self point of view to an unselfed point of view mm -hmm. um, that's an incredibly healing and progressive thought. Yeah. The kids who, who can worked I, can with I, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I, can I just make one more point that I feel like of it, is, course. It, is so, it's so, it feels so important about art? I want to be clear that when I say art only, only is, works when it serves, I don't mean that as an artist people should listen to what people want to see and then try to make that. I don't mean that, which again, it's different than if you're making a product and you know, people in the, in the focus groups said that they want better design in, you know, in, in the shaver. They want it to open left instead of right or whatever. Right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean that, even though that is service. And I think that's the kind of service that we're more familiar with. And, and an artist has to say, I believe in, in beauty, or I believe in truth, or I believe in telling the truth about this political situation, or I believe in telling the truth about whatever. And I, I think that's, that's the thing that serves, and, and that's the piece that makes it different than 
than other kinds of, of service because you're, you're not the, asking people what they even want. Yeah. You're serving the ideal. Yeah, and the ideal, you're, you're, you're going on faith that people need that ideal. Well, and, and because they're ideals and they're, it's sort of the common truth that everybody shares, if you tap into that, people see it. Right. It communicates. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, if you're watching a film and there's an, a, a truly honest moment between two actors, yeah. you feel that. Mm -hmm. It connects. You feel it inside. Right. And I think the same is true. When, when we walk by your mural here at school, it's 18 feet high? 14, 14 by 60. 14 by 60, it's enormous. And it says, you are loved in incredible colors. Love it. Um, love it. <laughs> <laughs> you worked with the kids for part of it on one day, sort yeah. of the beginning of it. I mean, mm -hmm. their work is only so tall because they weren't on ladders. But um, they have such a sense of pride and connection with what they did. Mm -hmm. And really, I think it really resonates with who they are. They feel very proud. They feel very connected. They love yeah. the idea of being a part of something that says you are loved mm -hmm. because in the process they have communicated that they felt that sense of love mm -hmm. did you do you enjoy working with children in in the process have, you've done that a number I, of times i yeah? do it it's it's something that i have learned about over many years uh, i've led lots and lots of murals with kids and adults and sort of all all different kinds of folks um and that's that's a, a whole second piece of of art that it was not my first. I didn't understand that at first. Working uh, with working working with communities, working with children. Um, my first thing was was pictures, images, stories, you know, poetry. Um, and then it was really just out of necessity. Those were the jobs I was getting, uh, and I began to realize, oh, I actually do have a heart for this because because I actually like people. <laughs> um, and I've learned that it can be heaven on earth to make a, an environment in which people are coming to do something that they probably haven't done before. People are, are, are almost necessarily stepping out of their comfort zone when they are painting on a mural because most of them have never done it. And then when you get people stepping out of their comfort zones, then people start talking and having a fun time. Uh, and then that's just, it's really heavenly um, when people, it feels like a big party. Yeah. Uh, there was a great sense yeah. of community when we all got together here. Yeah. And, I, and it, it's what you're saying in the art is actually what people are experiencing in the process of creating the art. So it kind right. of folds in on itself, yeah. which is wonderful. What's your goal for your murals? Where do you want, where do you want this movement to go? Uh, I would like for there to be You Are Loved murals in in every state uh, I would like them I would I would like for, for it to be a known concept you know one school principal says to another one Are you, have you gotten a, a, a you are love mural yet um, because that would mean that it's that it's it's in the culture it's pe people are, are aware of it as a as a concept um, and even just that would be would be so progressive thinking about uh, Making, making school cultures or, or city cultures where it's, not, um, where it's not embarrassing to say you are loved uh, in a public way. That's, that's what I would love to see happen. There are, there are 15 right now, and I would like to put them everywhere. I did one in a, in a prison earlier this, this year, and that was just incredible. Um, Do you have any in hospitals? I don't have any in hospitals, and I would like to very much. I think the, the, the bullseye for these You Are Love murals is to put them in places where people are really potentially not feeling loved. Yeah, in need. Where, where it really yeah. becomes, uh, it confronts, it actually confronts the, the fear, you know, the disillusionment, the terror, uh, the sadness that, that people are feeling. Um, and I think that that's one of the most powerful things that the You Are Loved murals has to offer. They're very healing. I mean, they really are, as you say, confronting sort of the negative forces in the world. And there's so much in the media and, and billboards and signage that is so negative mm -hmm. or demeaning. Mm -hmm. And this is such a counter to that mm -hmm. and really powerful. In well, I, I arrived at each one of the five messages. They're, I mean, they're not haphazard. Each one of them was when I looked inside myself, I, I looked to see where my weakest spots were. What were the, what were the, what were the things that, that I felt most 
terrible about it at some point in my life. And there definitely were times where I wondered, am I loved? Am I beautiful? Am I necessary to this world? Am I important? Can I do it? All of those things, like, I have really wondered. Uh, and I think that's true of everybody. Uh, but, but so I was, when, I, when I was making the You Are Loved concept, I was thinking, what are the what are the statements that you can make that will touch people in the places where they feel the most needy? And that's mm -hmm. what arrived. That's how I arrived at those five. That's a f fabulous five. <laughs> the fab five. <laughs> what do you think the best teacher of character is? For me, the thing that has compelled, compelled me to push and push and push and push and push has been it goes back to feeling. It goes back to, to, you know, feelings I had as a teenager that, that, that love is real. Uh, that, that value underlies life. Uh, just that, 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 that good is there. Um, and so I think the way that that teaches character is that when you're lost, but if you can, you can go back to a resident knowledge that good is possible, you won't give up. Uh, when you're confused or, or when you have really messed up, if you, if you have had an experience that tells you that love is there, um, you will sometimes by a winding path, go back to that. And I think that's, that's what character is. Winding back to that, I think, is character. Um, I, I, I think that's it. You, you, when you have a compelling experience of value and meaning and love, you can never undo it. And it becomes this magnetic thing that, um, that draws people back to goodness. So. As an, as an educator, I mean, I, I, I think the, th the thing, the thing that, that invests in children or that invests in everybody is trying to create times when people will feel that deeply. I don't know exactly how to do that, <laughs> but... Well, you're doing it through your art. You're, yeah. I mean, and you're doing it in a, not, in a not very subtle way. You're saying you are loved. You're, you're putting it right in front of them. Feel right. deeply. Feel, and, and like you were saying, at least question it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will respond to it differently. But to put that question in front of them, you are loved, yep. and to say, wow, am I loved? Or yes, I do feel loved. But mm -hmm. immediately they're f thinking about the feeling state of love, mm -hmm. which is like instantaneous connection to good. Right. And that what you call the foundation of character yep. and acts that come out of character. I think we, we, we respond when we see character modeled. You know, yeah. we, 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 don't, we not only appreciate it, but it, it lands in us and we, we say, oh, there's somebody on earth who is that good. And if there's, that has been compelling to me a lot. There, there's somebody who is willing to be that honest, and when they are that honest, gosh, it's beautiful, and it, and it, and it, you know, makes you want to cry because it's so beautiful. That lands in me, and it makes me want to be more like that. And I think anytime we model character of whatever kind, I think you can pretty much rest assured that somebody's watching, and, and you know, every once in a while, it'll land in somebody that, that, you know. That exists on Earth, and, and that there's something inside everybody that that says, "I want to be more like that." Yeah, you know, it's a, probably a really good place for us to wrap up. I mean, it's it's not. It's been said. It's not what we do, but who we are that mm -hmm. really matters. How do you want to be remembered <laughs> or seen? Since you're not going anywhere, how yeah. do you want to be seen? Uh, I'd like to be seen as someone who's doing his best. Uh, I'd like to be seen as uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't thought about that too much. Um, 
well, let me ask you this way. Maybe it's a little easier. How do yeah. you want your art to be seen? Is that easy? Is that a little bit more accessible? I would like people to 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 be comforted by it. I would like people to uh, be inspired by it. I would like it to open up people's hearts. Um, I would like people to feel um, wondrous. Um, I'd like people to feel feel alive and surprised, um, and I guess maybe this is the maybe this is it. I think art has the has the power to to say this good thing that you're already feeling inside you exists outside of you, and that's very uh, orienting. It makes us feel less lost. I think when when we see some someone else out in the world that already feels the the spiritual joy or the the, the love of beauty or uh, whatever, the, the love of being alive or anything. Something that you maybe were nervous to say to somebody else, but then it's just there in a work of art. And you say, oh, it's already, it exists. It's not just in me, it already, it exists in the world. Do you think that feeling, that connection is something that everyone's yearning for? I would say so. I think, you know, that's, that's meaning. Everybody's longing for meaning. A life, a life without meaning is very, very difficult and scary. Uh, I think meaning helps people know where they are and that it's, that it's useful to be here. So how you want people to remember you is to know what they felt when they've seen your art. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would like people to be left with a, with a with a good, progressive, wondrous feeling. Alex Cook, thank you so much for being <laughs> with us. My pleasure, thank you. Our guest today has been Alex Cook, muralist of You Are Loved Murals, and thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.